If we could find a magic set of tools that would rapidly increase our ability to look amazing without needing to do more work or any work at all, I'm sure all of us would have found it by now and we would be mining the shit out of it ASAP. Selling that thing for millions and bottling up as a labeled product. And you and I both know that this kind of magic doesn't exist. Sadly, well there is maybe trend. So, <laughs> just fuck it up. Don't, that's not, no. Uh, allegedly. Now, some people do like to sell the idea that this concept does exist, that there is these perfect sets of things that you need to do to get the physique of a lifetime without really having to try too hard. And they have it, nobody else does. It's a blueprint that we've all been looking for and theirs is completely unique to everyone that's out there. Again, selling it for a very small fee and giving you a course on how to do what they do. We had the Liver King, which uh, I think he's, he's still around. <laughs> King Chef Lionel works on Barbarian Saturday. I'm Liver King Chef Lionel. At tonight for dinner, we're having a Bidia smoked cowlick. This is a whole cowlick smoked for 12 hours with a Bidia seasoning. All right, well, it, it appears he's he's still around, so. And in every video that the Liver King's posted, he also sold the products. It was his supplement line. Whenever he could squeeze it in, he's I think, dumbed it down now a little bit, but for the most part, it's in pretty much every short or long form content he's produced. Well, now we have his young apprentice who took the word by word course on Liver King content creation, who sells a group course to young men that's called testosterone maxing we are going to welcome nathan sage sages to the channel the testosterone coach or something like that allegedly basically he sells the dream that he has the tools to maximize testosterone and physiques by using carnivore-esque type of lifestyle hacks i guess now i want to say clearly before i even get started that this guy isn't bad he's just a younger man who's missing some morals which is just about any entrepreneur to be honest as, as much as you hate to hear it at the highest level even we have businessmen that lack morality alex ramosi is a good example still claims natural been through an eight-week transformation that he gained like 30 pounds or something and just claims he did it naturally without drt as much as people want to say he admits to trt he admits to trt retroactively not during the transformation that's ridiculously insane what i want to do is question the morality of this guy more specifically discussing the ideas he has and how effective they really are while simultaneously testing them against the idea that he might just be establishing things to sell himself or putting himself into a position as a marketer to sell the course this is a common trend that we see a lot of influencers doing rinse and repeats we talk about this thing all of the time usually these people are trying to do something a little bit inflammatory and then they sell a loss loser type product meaning a very low cost product that a lot of people can get into so they get the most amount of coverage on social media i.e free marketing and then they have a very low cost product that a good majority of people on social media could probably afford and you have a recipe for making a quick buck it works every time i guarantee if i had an extremely low cost product people would be buying it like crazy oh wait i do i have group access to a discord where you can privately communicate with me other coaches and get sources you should check it out but my products are actually legit this you'll see in a sec and if you look at a lot of influencers out there their common trends are basically speaking with conviction Right, speaking with conviction, and this is sort of hacking the system in a way that makes people believe you. Whenever you speak with conviction, it doesn't matter what you're talking about or how wildly inaccurate it might truly be, most people need an internet dad. It sucks to say, but it's true, and these people like the Andrew Tates resonate with other individuals because they do act as the strong dad character that a lot of us just to be very fair, don't have. This guy is virtually no different. Some of the things he says are really good and some of the things actually have great reality behind them. They're true. Now, other things he says are just downright fucking dangerous and silly. What is he claiming? You and I, let's find out. Stuck in the matrix, stuck in the matrix, stuck in the matrix. All these people aren't progressing in life, watching TV, rotting their brains away, getting nowhere, making no progress. Do you want to be there? Do you want to be making no progress in life? Find a hobby. Focus on yourself, focus on your fitness. Not fucking watching TV, rotting your brain away, getting nowhere. And I guarantee you, all those people are fat as fuck. 
red flag one, whenever anyone says Matrix, you can pretty much rest assured that there's something delusional with them. I get the whole concept of the Matrix and breaking away from it because I reached the escape velocity of like American commonality and moved abroad and haven't been back. But it's like the concept in and of itself is again, just selling a dream to people who feel like they need a dad. This is all it is. And one commenter on his post said it very well. He's talking about these people from the outside looking in. I'm curious, like what's the last book he fucking read? <laughs> to be honest, really. And seriously, this is like exactly what I mean with these influencers. The concept he's talking about is dialed in. It's accurate, right? Most people are just fucking lazy. They're pieces of shit. They, they do nothing. However, I think the majority of those people he's pointing out could just be chilling out after working a 12 hour shift or maybe even longer. Maybe that's the only time that they get with their family for the day. So they're sitting and watching a cartoon with their children or daughter while they have the time before they need to leave again and go to work. Because at the end of it, the, the best way to enjoy life is to enjoy the passage of time. That means doing things as much as you can that you thoroughly enjoy with the people that you love while they're also thoroughly enjoying it. Not sitting outside of people's windows with your shirt off and a flashlight on pointing out other people's insufficiencies. It's kind of weird, to be honest. You'll love this one. Yo, bro, you fat or pregnant? Buddy, I just ate 15 eggs and I'm going for a walk. What the fuck? You realize when you go for walks after you eat, your blood sugar doesn't spike as high. And when your blood sugar's not as high, you're burning more fat. So just go for a walk after you eat, and you're not going to be a fat ass. Okay, a couple more logical fallacies. And I need to get that fucking sound effect he uses because it apparently triggers the fucking algorithm or something. I don't know. Okay, so again, saying something immaculate here. Exactly and completely true. It's undeniable. We know that walking post-grandularly does effectively work at controlling blood glucose and blood glucose spikes throughout the day better than using metformin. Then he goes and adds exaggerated statements right behind it. If you just walk after you eat, you're not just inevitably not going to be fat. Of course, most people already know this more about what you eat versus what you do with your body after you eat. I'm also sure that eating f eggs doesn't spike your blood glucose unless you're, of course, eating 15, which is 750 calories in majoritively fat, to be honest. And I don't need to break down macro science here, but as you know, there is fat, carbohydrates, and protein. And fats is, uh, it, well, it's non-thermogenic. There's no essential process that expends calories to absorb fat. Fat. You eat a gram of fat, and it generally gets stored as a gram of fat. I'm missing a lot of metabolism here, but this is the general concept. Whereas the carbohydrates and protein have a very big thermogenic effect. In fact, you waste about 90-ish percent of the calorie just trying to get it absorbed into your body. Because these proteins break down into amino acids, and the carbohydrates break down into glucose or fructose, and then those have different metabolic pathways that they go through, it's not a one-to-one. -one. You don't eat four calories of protein and get four calories in your body. Body, that is why it's so efficient when trying to lose weight to increase protein. So if you're telling people not to get fat, you'd actually want them to have a generally lower fat diet model. People get so up in arms about this, right? So up in arms. I don't know why. Look, I've coached hundreds and hundreds of people, hundreds of people. I've never not seen a high protein, moderate carbohydrate, lower fat diet work for people. Just, I've never not seen it. It always works. If we're talking about maximizing performance, maximizing cognitive ability, and getting a rapid change in someone's physique, it just always works. The goal would actually be to increase someone's protein intake from a place of not doing anything, decrease their fat intake, because generally the reason that people are so fat in America is because the majority of their macronutrients come from carbohydrates and fats and modulate their, their carbohydrate intake, not completely annihilate. And you have yourself a build physique within six to eight months, depending on how fat you already are. The walking is definitely a contributing effect and it does control blood glucose, but that's all dependent on what you're eating beforehand and afterwards. It's not just going to magically lower your blood glucose. If you're eating like garbage, your body is not going to be able to tank that garbage. Yo, so boys, here's a full day of eating and training as a D1 athlete and bodybuilder trying to get as healthy as possible. Jogs are bullshit, but sprinting boost test 200%. So we had to start the morning with some sprints. And of course, I cooked her and she was gassed. Breaking the fast at 2 p.m. with a pound of ground beef, three duck eggs, and some rice. You already know that's the best test boosting meal you can get and hella fucking protein. Gotta get some muscle hypertrophy and so we hit back and shoulders at the gym. You already know I'm mogging the fuck out of her. Post-workout, don't get it twisted. We're eating more red meat. Test boost, obviously. So you got some potatoes for some quick carbs so that we can refuel. Can't forget your vitamin C and you need some fiber so you're not shitting bricks. So eat some pineapple. If you want to grow, you have to be eating more protein and red meat. So we stopped and got some steak. And here's the full macros and a breakdown of everything we eat today.
So I don't really need to explain why this is the worst idea in the world for most people. Also, a D1 athlete in what? He's never clarified. He just always says I'm a D1 athlete. Jesus, 300 grams of fat. Imagine how jacked and strong this guy would actually be if he was bulking with some fucking carbohydrates. Like you could actually be eating less calories and getting sufficiently more energy to perform glycolytic style training. Look, I, I take anabolic steroids. It's no secret. I love Anadrol, which is notoriously known as the best pre-workout like the god of pre-workouts you take it go to the gym and you perform an insane amount of work it's ground shaking it's crazy but it is still not even close still not even anywhere near as close as having a good amount of carbohydrates before you train i mean that shit is insane man if you have a really high carbohydrate meal and or you have glycogen stores that are completely saturated and you go train your training bout turns into a living dream most of the time people don't enjoy training because they're just flat and don't have enough glycogen loaded up this is why we use high days low days medium days and our calorie cycling but 300 grams man jesus christ i would be literally evacuating my guts while training like I, that's crazy i don't think there's any d1 athlete or any professional athlete that's eating like this at all yo bro why are you putting cinnamon on that glizzy bro you realize when you put cinnamon on your fruit it's gonna make you more shredded the cinnamon makes your blood sugar not spike as high and when your blood sugar is lower you're burning more fat so just put cinnamon on your fruit and you're not gonna be a fat ass i don't know man the tan lines in this thing right now dude i uh, i think he's I think this is just a fake tan. To be honest with you guys, I think this is all just a fake tan. Bro, what the fuck are you doing? Bro, I'm about to ice my balls. If you want to get over a thousand testosterone, you have to be doing this every morning. When your balls are colder, it allows you to produce more testosterone. So just do this in the morning for five to ten minutes, and you're going to be walking around bricks. All right, listen, that was pretty funny. But seriously, this has been experimented with a lot. The, the studies are pretty inconclusive, the data that we do have. And you'll notice that this, the stats he put up that were like heavily cut out from an actual like clinical study showed that sperm count increased. It did not show that testosterone had increased. Now, our friend Vigorous Steve did do this experiment on his own. He has pre and post ball icing testosterone levels. It marginally increased testosterone. Not by much. Is it as significant as someone might hope who is looking to get above 1,000 nanograms per deciliter of total testosterone. Not really, to be honest. And also, what's something to note is he just clips the same testosterone level and puts it on every single video. I don't know if it's his testosterone level. I don't know if it's just one he found on the internet. I don't know if he got that testosterone level one time and then never got it again because it is very hard to achieve a same number multiple times in a row. In fact, it's impossible. Very curious on all that. Quite literally, don't do this. It just isn't worth your time unless you are at the top of your game as a natural athlete and you're looking to get like 5% better, you might want to leverage this as an option. It has some application based on what we've seen from Vigorous Steve and a couple other content creators, but it's not much. I mean, it's 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 really not much. All right, but here's here's where the sauce comes from, guys. Here's This is about to get crazy. If you're going to talk a lot of shit on the internet, at least don't be guilty of something yourself. Dumb nutrition! He's a coach. He says he helps men 2 to 3x their testosterone in less than 90 days. He always seems to be looking for three people who want to get in the best shape of their life within 12 weeks. So he's a coach and most of his content looks like this. Let's go whip up some protein shakes. Protein shakes? You think I want a protein shake that has artificial sweeteners that's gonna make me a fat ass? Oh, and some synthetic protein that I don't even fucking absorb. You know what happens when you eat soy and sucralose every day? You Wait a minute, did any of you catch that? Or is that just me? There ain't no way in hell Buddy that's on here calling people soy boys is using a waste filter. Oh my fucking... You guys see how crooked this fucking post is in the back? Yeah, and if you start to look at his other content, you notice there's a waste filter on literally everything. Look at the sink in the background. See how it warps in and out. The steak and the plate and this dishwasher in the back is just fucking going nuts. This one's really funny. He has a filter on and he's standing against the wall. And after he throws this, the filter's stuck. So his stove is still crooked, if you notice. It's like warping there.
Yeah, so it uh, turns out the other homeboy, you probably recognize the sounds that were clipped. The infamous bell, the guy talking in the background was obviously the other guy we were just viewing. They sell the same exact course and coaching. So it is literally these two running the same marketing scheme because it's working so well for the other one. But what's funny about this is he is editing all of his content. He puts face filters on and waist filters on to create some sort of aesthetic that looks appealing is what I assume. I could only assume. I would fairly say that these two are willing to do quite a bit of manipulation to get to a algorithmic standpoint that's advantageous. I would not be surprised if this leads us to believe that there is also a copium of self-tanner going on that other kid's fucking body. So look, is this guy legit? No. He is far from legit, far from moral, far from anything that anyone should be listening to. He has some valid points, but valid points that basically everyone could tell you, and valid points that if put in practice correctly do definitely make changes in to a person's lifestyle. Is he legit in the sense of you buying his course is going to unlock you some foundational knowledge that you hadn't had before and you're going to level up your body? Well, I am so sorry to admit that that's probably not going to happen. This guy doesn't have any secrets that he's not telling you right now and he doesn't have any secrets that no other trainer has that you could just find for free online, to be honest. But if you're interested in getting some more assistance, we have a free Discord group down below. There's also paid sections where you can talk to me directly as well as many other coaches in the industry we love to help out and if you have questions about training nutrition dietary intake or supplementation and we're talking the super supplementation that is the place for you if you did enjoy this video and you don't want to spend money subscribing is always free and it helps a ton we'll see you in the next one